In this video, we're talking about camera angles and how they can really help create interesting and effective compositions. So if you'd like to get your photos just that little bit better, make sure and stick around. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So good to see you here and I hope you're all doing well. My name is Chris and my channel focuses on food photography. If that's something that tickles your fancy, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel and follow the conversation. When it comes to food photography, it's never just as simple as pointing your camera at the food and taking a photo. There's so many things to consider before you ever press the shutter button. Things like lighting, props, and what lens to use. But another very important decision you'll need to make is what camera angle you should shoot from. There are a few tried and true camera angles that are commonly used to showcase food in a more appealing way, and you want to make sure you're using the best camera angle for the scene you're trying to shoot. Some of this will be dictated by the actual type and size of the dish and can significantly impact your images. Looking at this scene here, we can see it's a bowl of soup. Actually, it's pork green chili, but if you're not from Colorado, it's just soup. We can see the whole, the whole dish, right? We can see the whole scene and no distracting background because we've chosen the correct angle to shoot at. Now, without changing the light or the scene itself, we move the camera down to a different angle. Now we have no idea what it is, there are distracting elements in the background, and we're left to wonder, what is it I'm supposed to be looking at? Today we're looking at the most common and generally the best camera angles for food photography, and why they're so effective. So we'll start at the top and we'll work our way down. The first one is the 90 degree angle, also called the overhead or the flat lay. This angle is captured from directly above the subject, looking straight down onto the plate or the table. It works well for compositions showcasing patterns or symmetry or an arrangement of ingredients. It allows your viewer to see the entire scene. The image is generally in full focus and is often used for showcasing an assortment of dishes or a full huge table spread. This is the angle you want to use when you have a scene that is large and has many different components. This angle is also quite effective when you're shooting dishes that are flatter and don't have a whole lot of height to them. Shooting it from overhead means you don't have to worry so much about the depth of field and just get a great photo with everything in focus. There are a few things you want to pay attention to when shooting at 90 degrees. The first is lens choice. You'll want to, uh, uh, to shoot with a wider lens so you're not, you don't need to be so far away from the scene. Shooting with a longer lens, like anything above a 50 millimeter, means you must get that much farther away from the subject. Uh, and can make it very difficult to, to frame your shot. I find that the easiest way to get these types of shots is to set up your scene on the floor and stand over it. If you need more distance, you can always stand in a chair or a step ladder. But here's a pro tip, don't get your feet in the photo. The 45 degree angle is probably the most commonly used angle uh, for food photography. It simulates the look of a dish as if we were perhaps sitting right in front of it. Shooting from a 45 degree angle provides that three dimensional perspective that adds depth to the image. This angle allows you to showcase the height, the layers, the textures of the food, which is why it is so commonly used. It, it is really a versatile angle for many types of dishes. Unlike shooting at the 90 degree angle, the 45 degree angle begins to introduce more of your background. So be very cognizant of what is in the background of your image. It is too easy to miss things in the background that stand out uh, or do not belong there while you're intently focused on your subject. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten my images on the computer and realized there was something in the background of my photo that shouldn't have been there. All because I forgot to check around the frame. If you're just getting started with food photography, this is where I recommend you begin with your photos. Shooting at eye level or straight on for the point of this discussion would technically be zero degrees, but no one calls it that, at least that I've ever heard. Shooting at this angle really emphasizes dishes that are tall and can really make something such as a slice of layer cake or a double, stop, a double stack hamburger almost larger than life. You really get to see each layer of food and how it was assembled. Shooting straight on is also a good opportunity to get in close to your subject and fill up that frame. Shooting on a diagonal or what's called Dutch angles, it's not very common in food photography, but can help in specific situations to add some visual interest to an image by adding some dynamism to the composition, kind of creating a sense of movement that can lead the viewer's eye through the frame. It's rare that I will use Dutch angles while getting to shoot food, but I have gotten a few images where I think it adds a little extra something to my photo. It's never something I plan for, it just kind of happens in the moment, so it's a little difficult for me to tell you uh, when it might be good to try. 
I would suggest experimenting with it while you're doing some handheld shots and see for yourself. And this last one, while it's not specifically an angle, macro shots or getting up close and tight is another way to create uh, intimate and enticing images with camera placement. Close up or macro shots highlight the details and textures and colors of the dish, making the viewer focus on specific elements, capturing the details of, you know, an ingredient or a garnish. You can shoot macros from any of the angles we spoke about previously, but they allow you to capture something completely different, even shooting the same dish. There are a couple of ways to get macro shots. Uh, the first and most obvious is to use a macro lens. These lenses usually take a fair amount of practice to get used to because they, they do have a shallow depth of field. Um, and if you don't have one, it is an investment. The second is to you know crop in your scene with a photo editing software. It will take a little planning to make sure you have the right area in focus, but you can crop in in your software to, to simulate what is a, a, a macro shot. Ultimately, the choice of camera angle depends on the desired effect, the specific dish, and the story you're trying to convey with your photos. Experimenting with different angles and perspectives can help you find a more compelling way to showcase <clears throat> the food and often lead to some stunning results. With all that said, there are a range of angles outside of what we have spoken about, and none of these rules are hard and fast, so if a dish looks better somewhere in between 45 and 90 or 45 and zero, then don't be afraid to go your own way. I really hope this has been helpful and if you found it useful, I'd, really, I'd, I'd appreciate you giving me the thumbs up on the video as that lets me know that this type of content is what you enjoy seeing and, and it does help. Uh, wishing you all a great week, happy shooting and bye for now.